I shall make for Weathertop. Weathertop, said Sam. What's that? It is a hill just to the north of the road, about halfway from here to Rivendell. It commands a wide view all round, and there we shall have a chance to look about us. Gandalf will make for that point if he follows us. After Weathertop, our journey will become more difficult, and we shall have to choose between various dangers. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are taking a look at one of the most famous locations in the North Kingdom, Weathertop, or Amon Sul, the Watchtower of the Dúnedain. There will be related and helpful articles and videos in the description and cards, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. In the late years of the Second Age, after 3319, and the coming of Elendil and his people to Middle-earth from Numenor, the Northern Kingdom of Arnor was founded. Like its counterpart Gondor in the south, Arnor was home to the Dúnedain, the men of the west, and many were the great structures they built in the height of their power. Weathertop, then called Amansul, the Hill of the Wind, was one such place, for it was a great watchtower placed at the eastern edge of the Weather Hills between Breland and the Lone Lands, upon a hill that was rather circular and flat upon its top. So great was this tower that one of the seven Palantiri, seeing stones of Middle-earth, which allowed its user to speak to other stones and watch from a great distance, was put there in a high chamber. This was unlike other Palantiri, however, for it was so great in stature that it could not be easily lifted by one alone, and required multiple men to move it. Amansul sat north of the Great East Road, which ran west to east from the Grey Havens to the Misty Mountains. It was from this spot that, in the early part of the War of the Last Alliance, Elendil watched for the coming of Gilgalad from Linden, and it may have even been here where Elendil and Gilgalad swore an oath of friendship and alliance which bound their factions together in this war. Amansul would then remain a quiet but very useful watchtower to the men of the north for many years, until centuries into the Third Age when the kingdom of Arnor was split between the three sons of King Eärendil, going to Arthedain, Cardolin, and Rudaur, and it was during this geopolitical split and some of the border disputes soon after that this tower became a very important and conflictual place, for the Watchtower and its Palantir sat on the edges of all three petty kingdoms, causing problems particularly between Cardolin and Rudaur. Each wished to possess the Palantir, as Anuminas and Elosterion and their respective stones belonged to Arthedain. Therefore, the disputes over the tower were greatest between these two factions, and would continue until the coming of Engmar and its evil, which would see it destroyed. But before its destruction, Harfoots of the Hobbits came to move nearly to Weathertop during their migrations. During the reign of Argaleb, no other true descendant of Isildur remained in the other kingdoms, so he claimed lordship over the three petty kingdoms, attempting to reunite Arnor. Yet Rudaur resisted this, for it had been claimed by the Hillmen, who were allies of Angmar. Argaleb fortified the Weather Hills, the Great East Road, the Lower Horwell, and of course Amansul, but he would be slain by his foes, and his son Arvaleg became king. Rivendell in the east was besieged by servants of Angmar, and while the men of Arthedain, Cardolin, and Linden fought back against the advances and held for quite some time, a great host descended out of Angmar in 1409, and eventually fought to Amansul, which they surrounded. Arvaleg and his forces were then slain, and Amansul was burned and razed to the ground, leaving only pieces and fragments of its former glory behind. Its palantir, however, would be saved and spirited away to the north, even with its large size, where, years later, it would eventually be lost in the Bay of Forukel, along with the palantir of Anuminas and the last king, Arvidwi. After the destruction of Amansul, it became better known as Weathertop by all, and it would remain a ruin, a memory, of the old kingdom of men in the north. While certainly some who were timeless, such as the elves or others who were wise concerning the lore of the Dúnedain of the North, remembered the importance of Amansul, many others thought of it just as a ruin of ancient days, destroyed in some war, nothing more. However, one amongst the timeless would have a dealing there near the end of the age, in 3018, for Gandalf, who was seeking the four hobbits who were beginning the quest of the ring, came there and was attacked by some, if not all, of the Nazgul and he fought back against them with powers of light, almost like lightning, which Frodo and the others saw from afar at the Midgewater Marshes. Gandalf left a message in Markings, which would eventually tell Aragorn and the others that he had been there on October 3rd, two days before they came there. 
From atop the broken tower, the hobbits and Aragorn saw Nazgul from afar, approaching upon the road. And later that night, they would be attacked by the Nazgul, and Frodo would be stabbed by the Witch King with a Morgul knife in their camp below the summit. And though Frodo cried the name Elbereth aloud and fought back against the Nazgul, it was Aragorn and his flaming brand that warded them off. Yet Frodo was scarred for the rest of his days from this one encounter. Frodo would then be hastened to Rivendell by his friends, but he would always remember that day. Likely in the Fourth Age and beyond, Weathertop would, at least for a time, remain a rather desolate memory of ages past, but surely with the remaking of the North Kingdom by Aragorn, King Elisar, this watchtower would be remade, just as the kingdom itself was, and new memories would be made there, while the scars of war with the Nazgul remained for both the historians of Arnor and for those who knew the tale of Frodo the Ringbearer. And so we come to the end of our own tale about Weathertop, Watchtower of the North. From this tale, we see that we must remember how many tales and years all lands hold, and how vast their stories may be for those who know them. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this region spotlight. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on Weathertop? Let me know in the comments below. Due to its history, early spot in the story, and how it is portrayed in adaptations, Weathertop will always hold a dear place in my heart. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings swords, statues, and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping, and use the code WEST at checkout. And please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Molly Sullivan, Blair Scout and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Anna Petrolik, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswell Project, Robert Bogan, King of Games 2500. Thank you so much to all of our YouTube members and patrons. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next Sunday with a video on what if the Blue Wizards return to the West. Friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.